coming up, the big Memorial Day weekend getaway is on. Now, what to expect if you're just about to hit the road or maybe flying out? What's the best and worst times to do all of that? Also this morning, the latest on the debt ceiling showdown with the default looming and what you can do to protect your money. Plus, we hear from the bank customer who stopped a robbery with, get this, a hug. Yeah, that's coming up right here on GMA. Nose iron bites steel, grinds hard stones to kneel. No elves, dwarves, or nasty little hobbitses to play as here. The Lord of the Rings, Gollum, casts the player in an unlikely role. My precious. This is a really cool idea. The Lord of the Rings Gollum is a very interesting take on this character that has been central to all kinds of tales across Tolkien's work. And it's a, a story that takes place between the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. The Dark Lord, what did you tell him? Nothing. Players get to experience both sides of Gollum's personality. So we get to follow Gollum and Smeagol because he's a character with two personalities. And we see his desire to retain and regain his precious. It's a stealth action adventure game, which fits. Gollum is a guy that likes to slink in the shadows. Shadows. Gollum himself is a lot more cartoony, a lot more stylized. It makes him a little bit more sympathetic. There's an innate empathy that I think Gollum kind of expects from the reader or the viewer anyway, because he's a tortured soul. He does some horrible things, but he's been through a lot, you know? And so I think it's pretty interesting that we get to control this character and kind of see the world through his eyes. We must find him. Yes, no, not him. Searching for my precious in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Less than three minutes till six, and a whole bunch of you just headed out the door and hit the roads. We're noticing quite a bit more traffic out there. We'll talk about that coming up as we get you an update at the top of the hour. Looking live right now at I-10 and Medical. There's I-10 at Provant. Noticing quite a bit more traffic on 410 near the airport. We know it's going to be a very busy travel day there and a lot more traffic on 35 at Walsham. I saw some flashing lights there. We will check with TxDOT and get back with you if there is anything happening in that part of town. We'll be right back. It's one of the busiest times for airports all across the country. Good morning, I'm Melissa Cole, and coming up, we'll tell you what you should expect here at the San Antonio Airport if you plan to travel this weekend. And let's look out there with live cam this morning. Happy Friday, it's 72 degrees out there. Things, you know, feeling good out there so far, but we're gonna be checking in with Mike very soon to see what we can expect over the Memorial Day weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Friday, May 26th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. We're starting to see the roads a little busier. Wondering if those people are going to work or on vacation. Yeah, either way, uh, people trying to get a jump start on the long holiday weekend on their work day or maybe headed out of town. That's true, but let's go ahead and check in with Mike to see what people can expect here in town. Well, if you are hitting the roads right now, pretty good out there. Obviously a hint of humidity, but um, is this my imagination or are we starting to see a glow out there? I believe you're the, right. Yes. And, you know, we, we always remark on that this time of year as it gets earlier and mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. Sun's going to be coming up in about 40 minutes approximately, and uh, it should be a good looking sunrise. We will have a few clouds out there, though. There are just a couple of them uh, scattered about here and there. 72 degrees, so we have lost one notch, one degree in the past hour. Same things Stinson, Port SA, and some mid 60s in parts of the hill country. Yeah, we do have some humidity um, that obviously nothing, no big surprise this time of year. And dew points are up there, but they will be dropping down somewhat later on this afternoon as the, the humidity kind of goes through its, its 24 hour cycle, where it's a little higher in the morning and then drops somewhat in the afternoon. And the allergens, speaking of dropping, mold, even though it's still high, did drop considerably from the previous day's reading. Temperatures this morning, we will drop another couple of degrees here and there. Partly cloudy skies. We make it up into the mid 80s already at noon and then we are going to be topping off later on today at 87. 
partly cloudy skies and a couple of degrees below normal, which can't complain about that. And that's going to be the situation through the weekend as well. 88 tomorrow, 86 on Sunday. Sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds around here. Some humidity, as you would expect. And then Monday, yeah, we will have a couple of showers, even a couple of thunderstorms around the area. Sort of bumped up the rain chances from 30 to 40 percent. It won't be a washout. It won't be raining constantly, but there will be uh, obviously some rain around the area and even a couple of uh, decent downpours here and there. And what to expect in beyond that as we kind of start the unofficial start of summer. Details in just a couple of minutes. Checking out traffic right now. Yes, sir, uh, two disabled vehicles right now. We mentioned one earlier. 35 South at Eisenhower and we have another one coming into town on I-10. I-10 eastbound at Hildebrand. I-10 at Provent looks okay so far, so thank you for that update, Mark. Just into our newsroom, an Amber Alert, the San Antonio Police Department is searching for Zyla Fox. She is two years old and has black hair, brown eyes. They are also searching for nine-year-old Camille Brown Sykes, who has black hair and brown eyes. The police are also looking for 29-year-old Julio Nahar Trevino in connection with their abduction. Now the suspect is driving a gray 2008 Saturn Aura with Texas license plate number SWS6018. You are asked to call the San Antonio Police Department if you have any information. New details this morning about a 75 year old woman who was killed after being hit by a vehicle while crossing a street on the south side. Happened around 915 last night on Pleasanton Road near South Cross. Police say the woman and a teen were crossing the street when a driver hit the woman in the road. We're told she died there at the scene. The teen was not hurt. The driver pulled over to help and is not expected to face charges. And another Big story we are following this morning. A highly critical internal report is out about some of the nation's most elite war fighters, the Navy SEALs. It was ordered last fall, months after the death of a SEAL candidate. And as ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, it brought about an overhaul of the SEALs selection program. This morning, a new report reveals an unsafe and dangerous environment for Navy SEAL recruits, stemming from the death of a trainee after the so-called Hell Week. The nearly 200-page investigation details the grueling course that 24-year-old Kyle Mullen successfully finished before he died last year. And I said, Kyle, are you okay? Are you hurt? Are you in a hospital? And he just responded, don't worry, Mom. I'm good. I love you. And he hung up. In the report, instructors were described as enforcers, hunting the back of the pack to weed out weaker candidates and push the demands of the course to the far end of the acceptable spectrum. The report also found medical staff were poorly organized, poorly integrated, and poorly led and put candidates at significant risk. After days of being ill, yet still training, Mullen was found to have died of pneumonia. And with no misconduct found on Kyle's part, he he was deemed to have died in the line of duty. This investigation shows that Seaman Mullen was not at fault. They found no performance enhancing drugs in his system. He did nothing wrong. But the Navy's report found that some recruits were pushed to use performance enhancing drugs to cope with the program's requirements. Despite a drop in graduation rate, the program's commander refused to adjust it, telling leaders zero is an OK number. Hold the standard. Naval Special Warfare Command has already implemented improvements to its training programs, including greater instructor oversight and training, updated medical policies, and expanded authority to test for performance enhancing drugs. Two top Navy officers who headed the program were pulled from their jobs two weeks ago, and a number of personnel have been referred to Navy legal authorities for potential punishment. The results of this investigation will now be turned over to the Navy's legal command. Punishment for those Navy personnel could range from non-judicial punishment to court action. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. A new deal between Ford and Tesla. Starting next spring, Ford electric vehicles will have access to about 12,000 Tesla supercharger stations in the U.S. and Canada. Ford owners will have to pay to use the service. No details yet on the cost. And if you're hitting the road this Memorial Day weekend, you're going to pay less to get to your destination. Experts say low demand for fuel is driving gas prices down. The average price for a gallon of unleaded about $3.57 a gallon, down 22% from a year ago. The average price in San Antonio, though, is $3.06. It's touchdown for NFL fans. YouTube will allow Sunday ticket subscribers to watch multiple game streams under the same roof. However, 
If you're not watching at home, you can only have two streams at once. YouTube TV made the move after concerns from subscribers. Texas legislators have made a leap forward in saving a state park from turning into a multi-million dollar home community with a private golf course. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission unanimously voted to take all necessary steps to purchase approximately 5,000 acres. And that includes Fairfield Lake State Park. The lake is known for some of the biggest bass in Texas. Ooh. If you're looking for a unique getaway this summer, get the front row seat of the Hill Country at a private treehouse out in Utopia. Each treehouse has special features and offers different amenities. All treehouses listed are about a two hour driving distance from San Antonio. Look for this article on our website at ksat.com. It is so pretty out there in Utopia. Oh yes, uh, we've done a couple of stories out there and it looks pretty neat to visit. I fished out there too. Oh, okay, <laughs> so you know, spot on. Time now 608 and 72 degrees for now. Coming up on Good Morning America, stopping a potential bank robbery with kindness. Police in California say a man handed the teller a note saying he had a gun and was robbing a bank, and that's when a customer stepped in. You know, <laughs> that didn't seem right. And then I heard the other teller say that he slipped her a note, and then that's when I really realized that he was trying to rob the bank. What happened next and why he believes he was meant to be there, that's on GMA beginning at 7. And it's something you hear all the time. Pack your patience if you're heading to the airport over the holidays, and that'll be the case this weekend as well. AAA expecting this weekend to be the busiest for airports since 2005. Alyssa Cole standing by with the latest in a live report. Let's look out there with live cam. A pleasant Friday morning. Yeah. Beautiful sky out there, 72 degrees. We're going to get the latest from Mike on what we can expect all weekend long, including Monday. Just coming up. Twelve minutes past the hour, it could be a record-breaking weekend at San Antonio International Airport. Memorial Day weekend travel is expected to bring in passenger numbers not seen since before the pandemic. Yeah, well before the pandemic. Alyssa Cole joined us live from our airport. Alyssa, looks like it's getting pretty busy out there. Good morning, you all. Yeah, it's shaping up to be a pretty busy morning so far. We've been out here for a little more than an hour, and the cars have just been coming and going. Now, the airport is set to have its busiest Memorial Day weekend in its history. It's going to be going on through Monday. The airport director, we got a chance to speak to him yesterday. He says there will be nearly 187,000 travelers, and he adds that it is just a great pre-pandemic number to surpass. He also also as while the increased travel is great for the city, the extra people, uh, it could cause uh, headaches for people. In fact, a lot of people should keep in mind that they should come to the airport early in advance, at least two hours before your flight to make sure that you secure your spot. But for now, reporting outside of the San Antonio International Airport, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, Alyssa. And if you leave, uh, take a flight somewhere, please let us know so we can get somebody else out to the airport. Yes. <laughs> Check no. traffic right now. We had a stalled vehicle on 35 uh, near what Eisenhower. Was it? Yeah, Eisenhower. It was Eisenhower. That was showing up at one of those cameras over. I think it was Ritterman or Walsham, but uh, not causing a problem. It was yeah. on the shoulder. We are noticing a lot more traffic out there. Uh, some folks may be off today. Some folks are headed to the airport or out of town maybe for Memorial Day weekend, maybe going to the beach. So we are seeing traffic on the freeways around the Alamo City metro area. Yeah, I thought you were going to ask for souvenirs and or um, <laughs> yes, or pack you know. <laughs> Goes without saving. Pack a bag for me, huh? Yeah, <laughs> send back a box of, you know, saltwater taffy from someplace Aww. or something like that. So, all right, there are still uh, some schools in, although mm -hmm. most are going to be done after today. But uh, if by chance you are hopping on the bus, 69 degrees this morning and then later on this afternoon, 87, partly cloudy skies. All right, the hurricane season begins then uh, the 1st of June all the way through the end of November. So and next Thursday is the first. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so the National Weather Service, excuse me, the Hurricane Center, beg your pardon, uh, sent out its prediction for the upcoming hurricane season. Okay. And thanks to the El Nino, we're, we were in La Nina for course, years. That's what kept us so hot and dry around here. And it helps with a little more activity in the Atlantic season. But now that that's gone away, that tends to kind of keep a lid on things. So basically, the Hurricane Center is going for pretty much 
average. Okay. About a 40% for that. The average okay. being 14, they're going 12 to 17 and named One storms. to four yeah. major hurricanes okay. this year. Right. Average okay. being in about three, three. per year. Okay. So pretty much a, a normal, normal year. So, and then uh, Colorado State's going to be coming out with theirs as well. Okay. So a different forecast altogether. Yeah. Right. All right. Cousins. Here's uh, what it looks like. And uh, take a look at this picture out there. Great shot of the Frost Building. Yeah, I haven't Legacy. been down to that little area. I know sometimes we go live down there mm -hmm. Legacy, in the morning. Around Legacy Park, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, and, and they're, they're doing the, you know, redoing everything right down there. They finally got Houston Street open with all that uh, construction down. But yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful down there because I drive past that a lot heading down to uh, Market Square for uh, SA Live. So yeah, it's gorgeous down there. Thank you for that picture. All right, nice little glow of the morning sunrise. Couple of clouds hanging around there as well. And uh, temperatures are going to be, we'll keep some clouds around this morning. We'll may drop another degree or two here or there. Watch out for a patch of fog, even though hardly anything's showing up, just with the extra humidity out there, the extra moisture, still some moisture in the ground. So, you know, maybe hints of it here and there. And then we're gonna make it up to 84 at noon and top off at 87 later on this afternoon. Mixture of sunshine and clouds out there. And we've got, here's some of the few clouds that are hanging around here right now. Of course, we've got this sort of northwesterly flow in the atmosphere. We've been talking about how this can be um, very tricky and like yesterday, no computer models picked up on any of those showers and uh, those th thunderstorms, that cluster that developed. However, it did. You get those little disturbances, a little glitch in the atmosphere. And that's all it takes. Otherwise, there's not much going on around the country as of right now. Pretty uh, tranquil picture, if you will. Here is computer model going into Sunday. So today through tomorrow through most of Sunday, uh, we're going to be fine. But then Sunday evening, we get a few showers. This is the one that's a little more aggressive with the, uh, the rain chances. So we get a couple of showers moving in here on Sunday. And then Monday, we will have a few showers around the area. I've kind of bumped up the chances of rain to a 40% chance. Now, again, you look at this and go, oh my gosh, it's going to be raining. No, it's not. This is kind of painted in with a broad brush, but there is that chance around most all of the, uh, the area. A couple of uh, heavier downpours can't be completely ruled out, and that's going to be the situation in through Monday evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then Tuesday, What's nice to see is we still at least have the chance for some rain. That's the situation on into Wednesday as well. Temperatures also, I mean, once again, you like consistency? Yeah, almost put it straight edge across there as far as those temperatures and actually down below normal and we'll be pushing at 90 for a normal high temperature once we get into the next couple of days. So we're going to be almost five degrees below normal for high temperatures starting off next week and low temperatures with, you know, some morning clouds with some extra humidity out there are always going to be staying in the upper 60s, but still nothing really off the charts at all as far as temperatures going into most all of next week. And now through the middle part of next week, again, those temperatures are hanging in there really nice. We do have a uh, sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds today, tomorrow, Sunday, most of the day. A couple of showers going to try and move on in here Sunday late and then throughout the day on Monday, that chance for a few uh, showers, thunderstorms, 40% chance and Tuesday and Wednesday as well. So again, not a rain out mm -hmm. on Monday. Um, you know, if you got firing up the grill, got plans to go to a park, maybe the pool, something like that. Keep it in the back of your mind. Keep it in the back yes. of your mind. Yeah. We'll be okay. prepared then. And the umbrella that we've been getting good use out of, have that in the, maybe in that little pocket of your door in the car. So. Yeah, it's still in my car. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 619, 72 degrees. And after the break, a mother is speaking out about the terrifying moment. Family members were caught in a rip current and dragged out to sea. That's next in your GMA First Look. Ready to feel what it's like when you can do more with less asthma? It's possible with Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks <laughs> and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Are you in? Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. 
Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about newer worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. In this morning's GMA First Look, Rip Kurt, close call. Because it just happened so fast. All of a sudden, for Brandon and Jessica Smith, their three small children and other family members, almost their entire family, swept out to sea. It was a rip current. And this morning, they're speaking out to GMA. The four kids and my mom was out there. And then all of a sudden, they like started to get a little too far. I looked at Brandon and I was like, they're out too far. They're getting too far. We need to start calling them in. The next thing I know, Brandon is handing me his hat and his sunglasses and going into the water to get them. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you how the successful rescue unfolded. And then we're going into the water. You start to exhaust yourself. And that's when it's harder to stay above water. To show you the life-saving tips to survive a rip current. With your GMA First Look, I'm Matt Gutman, ABC News. Memorial Day weekend is finally here, and as we begin the summer grilling season, today is the day we take you to Camp Brisket at Texas A&M. We've been working on this story since January when I attended the two-day camp in College Station. Camp Brisket sells out every year, and students from as far away as Germany come to talk, listen, and learn everything there is to know about Texas barbecue with a special focus on brisket. I learned things I never knew about the science of beef, from harvesting it to a deep dive on the different cuts, marbling, and how meat is grated, choice, select, and prime. As far as smoking a perfect brisket goes, the quest really never ends. Uh, learning never ends here, but what's most fascinating, it's not the participants that learn so much here, it's the professors, the instructors, and the pit masters that every time we come here, we pick up things from others that help us in our teaching, but also help the pit masters in making modifications to make their great products even greater. So did you know every cow has two briskets, one on each side? They're breast muscles near the legs, so they're big, hard-working muscles. That makes them inherently tough, and the main reason why we have to cook them low and ah. slow. So coming up today on GMS 8-9, you'll see an even beefier story about <laughs> Camp Brisket, and we'll have a debrief called Things I Wish Someone Had Told Me About Smoking a Brisket. We'll pass along expert advice for free. Yeah, a lot of things that I didn't think about, that's for sure. That's coming up on GMSA at 9. Looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Time now, 625 and 72 degrees for now. Checking trans guide at last check. We had no accidents so far this Friday morning, which is pretty good considering we are about two hours into our morning show now, looking live at 90 in Nogalitos and 90 at Military. With the pandemic waning, people feel more comfortable traveling. Good morning, I'm Melissa Cole, and coming up, we'll tell you the new details you should keep in mind before planning your trip to the airport. And outside with live cam, we are expecting heavier traffic in the airport and around the airport for the entire holiday weekend. We have a weekend forecast coming up. Welcome back. And happy Friday at 630 on your Friday, May 26th. Yes, happy Friday. Hope you've had a good morning so far. We've looked on the roads and see quite a few people, few people are out and about already. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all. I bet uh, the roads to the beaches are going to be yeah. very busy starting today. Yes, you probably. know 37 heading down there toward Port mm -hmm. A is going to be uh, pretty crowded, as yeah. will the beach. Uh, if you are hitting the roads, though, I mean, everywhere looks pretty good. Uh, far up there around the panhandle, you may run into a, a couple of showers. But here in town, things are looking nice. Sun is coming up. Obviously, we've got that fuzz there in the background. So a little bit of extra humidity. You do kind of feel it when you have a dew point up to 69, which, you know, it's not like wet towel sort of humidity, but enough out there. Temperatures at 72, just a couple of degrees above where we should be this time of year, but still nothing too extreme. And that's the situation everywhere. A lot of 70s on the map, up just a couple of degrees even compared to the past few days. And these numbers are also up ever so slightly, these uh, dew point temperatures. So, yeah, it is muggy. I mean, it's really kind of getting there on the verge of 
being really muggy around uh, Port S.A. as well as around Stinson. The allergens, molds on the high side, but it came down a lot compared to the previous day's reading. It was up around 6,000 or so. Mostly cloudy skies this morning, and then later on today, partly cloudy. Upper 80s, 87 to be exact. Same temperatures we had yesterday. Humidity will drop somewhat in the afternoon. Still enough out there to notice it. And then going to the weekend, pretty much continuation of today. We'll have some clouds hanging around here. Temperatures are going to be in the uh, mid to upper 80s. Then we get into Monday, Memorial Day, and we will have a few showers and a couple of storms around here. Call it a 40% chance for showers and a few storms and temperatures in the mid 80s. Specifically looking at the weekend and Saturday and Sunday, Probably better looking days for outdoor activities. We'll have a couple of those showers developing late Sunday off to the west. And then again, that chance for some rain. Not a washout on Memorial Day, but yeah, there will be a few of them around. Any more rain after that? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Check out uh, traffic right now and uh, let's see. Looking around town. I'm looking at text out real quick. Mike okay, you check I... that out. We'll look at 35 at Maine. Everything's moving along very well both directions. 37 Jones, no just problem there. Stall vehicles here and there, but no minor or major accidents to report as yeah. of 631. Fantastic. Good so far. And a local couple is accused of doing the unthinkable, repeatedly causing severe injuries to a three-year-old boy. Both of them have been arrested. Katrina Weber has details on this story live from the downtown area. And Katrina, we know that one of the suspects is the child's mother. That's right. The other suspect, according to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, is the mother's boyfriend. Our camera was rolling as both of them were taken into custody last night. 25-year-old Justin Garcia and 24-year-old Brandy Laurel both face charges of injury to a child here in Bear County, but it's possible they also could face charges in Dimmit County. Well, the arrest affidavit says Laurel's three-year-old son suffered injuries to his face, back, head, and legs including a fractured skull and two badly broken legs. During the past month, it says the sus excuse me. Excuse me. All right, we're going to try to come back to Katrina a little bit later in the newscast. Hope you're okay, Katrina. On to other news at just about 6.33, it could be a record-breaking weekend at San Antonio International Airport. Memorial Day weekend travel is expected to bring in passenger passenger numbers not seen before the pandemic. Yeah, since way before, almost after 9-11 numbers, 2005-ish, Alyssa Cole joined us from the airport. Alyssa, it has looked pretty busy out there. What's the latest as we uh, approach the 7 o'clock Good hour? morning, you guys. A busy morning here at the airport. Everybody's packed up, ready to go somewhere warm, hopefully, and <laughs> take a look. That's been the scene, you know, all morning here at the airport. People coming and going, the passengers coming up to departures kissing and hugging their loved ones prepare for the trip. But here at the San Antonio airport, this will be a record breaking number for travelers close to 190,000. And those are the numbers that they're planning to see all weekend long through Monday. During this five day period, this is a 14% increase for travelers in this area. And you know, we got a chance to speak to the airport director yesterday. He says this is a very big, big deal for the San Antonio Antonio International Airport. They've also been adding new features for parking and valet parking so people can move around easier because, of course, with more travelers, more traffic, that means a longer wait time. So when we talk to the officials here, their advice to everyone this weekend planning to have a visit here or any other airport on their way back is to pack or to prepare early to get here early. Of course, you want to arrive two hours before your flight just in case there is a little backup. But for now, reporting at the San Antonio Airport, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. All right, thank you, Alyssa. In a unanimous decision, the Texas House Investigative Committee has issued 20 articles of impeachment against Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Those include bribery, conspiracy, and misappropriation of public resources. The state's top lawyer has been under FBI investigation for years over accusations that he used his office to help a donor. Now, the Attorney General released a statement saying in part, quote, I am doing exactly what voters elected me to do. It is a sad day for Texas as we witness 
against the corrupt political establishment unite in this illegitimate attempt to overthrow the will of the people and disenfranchise the voters of our state, end quote. Only two officials in Texas's nearly 200-year history have been impeached. The state house could vote on impeachment as soon as today. He would then be tried in the Senate. If he is found guilty, Paxton would be forced to leave office immediately. A San Antonio city leader is asking for the state's help in shutting down a local bar. Councilman Manny Pelias says ongoing police service calls to Provence Social Club uh, UTSA Boulevard Advance Jackson are forcing his hand. The councilman wrote a letter to the TABC protesting the renewal of the business's liquor license, which is up for inspection next month. Police responded to the facility more than 100 times in seven months' time. Calls include fights and shootings. Pelai says he's not aware, was not aware rather, of the ongoing issues until a shooting about a week ago killed one and injured three others. So the one way that we know we're going to deal with this is uh, ideally is, um, I don't see another way but other than to have this bar shut down. TABC says their investigation into the facility could take weeks or months. SAPD says their investigation is also still ongoing. In a statement, Pravat says they are cooperating with investigators and will increase armed security. A San Antonio man has found himself on the list of the 10 most wanted fugitives in the state. This is 44-year-old Stephen Clay Lifesty. Several warrants for his arrest have been issued over the past two years. Now, those include sex assault of a child and failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. Life is, is about 5 foot 11, has tattoos on his back and left shoulder. If you know anything that can lead to him, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. And that number is 1-800-252-TIPS. Information that leads to his arrest could get you a cash reward. Now, U.S. Marshals have announced the finding and recovery of more than 200 missing children over 10 weeks with multiple law enforcement agencies. Many of those missing children cases from right here in the San Antonio area all found through an operation called We Will Find You. That operation stretched across 16 major areas in the U.S. looking for children who are believed to be in dangerous situations. Ages range from 12 to 17 years old. A total of 225 children were found during the operation that ran from early March to mid-May. 30 were found here in San Antonio. We want to make sure that families in this area understand that if they have a missing child, we have a role in helping those families. U.S. Marshal Susan Parmelo says they are now working with the Department of Family and Protective Services to get the children back in the right guardianship. The San Antonio native and the directors of the U.S. Census Bureau, Robert Santos, received an honorary degree yesterday during San Antonio College's commencement ceremony. In a press release, San Antonio College says Santos began his academic career at the Alamo College nearly half a century ago. Now, SAC President Dr. Nadine Gonzalez de Jesus praised Santos for his public service and contributions to society. Santos says he was surprised and humbled to receive the esteemed degree. Congrats. Congrats. Friday morning, 638, 72 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up after the break. I didn't see myself as having a disability until fourth grade. We're not that different when you think about it. And after the break, we're going to introduce you to this morning's great graduate. You're not going to want to miss how she's going for her dreams. 642, being born with cerebral palsy, didn't stop this Northside ISD Stevens High School senior from going after her dreams. Those dreams involve the Paralympic Olympic Games. Sarah Costa introduces us to the track and field star athlete and her plan on making it to Paris next year for the big games. No dreams too big, no dreams too small. Stevens High School senior Alicia Mears doesn't sweat the small things. She is focused on the big goal, making it to the Paralympics next year in Paris for track and field. It's something she's been training for since she started competing when she was five years old. But it wasn't until a game of tag in elementary she realized she was different. I didn't see myself as having a disability until fourth grade. She noticed all the other kids were running and she was hopping on her crutches. Crutches she had used her whole life being born with cerebral palsy. CP is a neurological condition that my brain doesn't tell my muscles what to do. 
She says her CP is just an what, what obstacle, but doesn't like to view it as a disability. Uh, I always say disability, but like when I like write it out or type it out, I always put dis in parentheses and then ability. I love that. Like, there is no dis, it's just ability, because like we all have different abilities. One of those abilities, extreme drive and positivity. Any workout that I plan, you know, for her, hey, this is what we're gonna do, and I try to think of the hardest thing possible, and she's like, yeah, I got this. Stevens High School track and field coach Tracy Hessen says that attitude noticed by her peers. And there will be kids that come out of her way, out of their way to go and talk to her, give her a fist bump and say good job. So uh, to say that she's ins an inspiration, that just really goes without saying. That hard work paying off with results, placing second in shot put at UIL State and taking home a gold, silver, and two bronze medals at the U.S. Paralympic Track and Field Championships earlier this year. And next year, she'll be competing as a Division I athlete at Arizona University for track and field. Her athletic ability can take her to that level, that highest level of the Olympics. I will not doubt it. If I turn on my TV and there she is, I, I think that is definitely going to be in her future. Alicia says she hopes all of her hard work doesn't just pay off at the international level, but more importantly, that awareness is raised for all para athletes, that their hearts and minds aren't any different than anyone else's. We're not that different when you think about it. Like you play sports, we play sports. Like, you like watching TV, we like watching TV. You like movies, we like movies. Like, we definitely have a lot in common. Sarah Costa, <laughs> KSAT 12 News. Also coming up on GMSA at 9, we are highlighting another high school graduate who is proving that with love, determination, and passion, you can accomplish a lot. We're going to introduce you to the senior from New Braunfels High School who has inspired so many people with her resilience. Be sure and keep it right here for GMSA at 9. Checking traffic, we have our first accident of the morning, but it's way east of downtown San Antonio. As a matter of fact, there's not even a camera out there. We're talking about an accident right now working at westbound 10 and Zool Road. That is, as you're coming in from Seguin towards San Antonio, the accident kind of between Seguin and Loop 1604, again in the westbound lanes of I-10. It is affecting... Gosh, almost all the main lanes, so expect some possible backups for what is, appears to be a minor accident. And you said that's coming in, in the San Antonio town. from Seguin. Seguin. So yeah, westbound yeah. 10. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, if you are hitting the roads, uh, you want to actually, you know, have some good driving habits going on. Maybe pay attention to what's going on. 10 and 2. Uh. <laughs> Which does not look like Sierra is doing 10 and 2 on the steering wheel. You know what I bet Sierra does that a lot of us don't do? Use her turn signal? Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> Looks I mean, like she's changing and, and, the radio station. Well, and look at the side <laughs> eye. She's giving to the camera. It's like, here, let's pay attention to the road here. Sure. So. Checking her rearview mirror. <laughs> That's an adorable picture. So thank you very much for that. And boy, if you are heading on out, get some sunglasses as well. We've got that kind of haze there along the horizon with all the uh, extra humidity. Temperatures are... Well, we will be closer to normal, which is uh, 69 this time of year. Humidity, yeah, it's up there, but uh, up about five degrees compared to this time yesterday. However, as the day rolls on, these dew points will be dropping down somewhat as we go through the usual cycle. And so it's, yeah, you'll notice the humidity this afternoon, but it won't be as high. Then it'll come back up again tomorrow morning and then drop down throughout the afternoon again. Now, yesterday, of course, we had that uh, nothing was showing up on computer models, but we still have this northwesterly flow. And of course, right around late morning noon, that cluster of showers and thunderstorms developed out there to the northwest and decided to sneak into our area and dump some decent rain off to the west that can't be totally ruled out again today. So it's just something we keep an eye on when we have this northwesterly flow around here. Now let's jump ahead to Sunday. And there will be a couple of showers developing later on Sunday, especially obviously out to the west and sort of scooching across the area, then dying down a little bit, then kind of firing back up again on Monday. Now, this is not going to be raining constantly on Monday, but there will be a few showers, will be a few thunderstorms around the area. So if you do have outdoor plans on Monday, just have a, a, a plan B, maybe uh, an indoor plan, if you will. The nice thing, though, is, yes, we have rain chances on Monday. Uh, it's on the holiday, but at least we're getting some more rain. And then we still have some rain chances hanging around here, even into the uh, middle part of next week. Now, again, these models tend to paint things in with 
with a broad brush, so it's not obviously going to be raining everywhere all at once, but there will be, like I said, just a few of those uh, showers and some uh, storms out there on Monday. All right, temperatures, normal high, 89. It'll be 90 by the weekend next week. Look at that. Numbers are five degrees below normal and then some. Same thing with low temperatures staying at or slightly below normal. So fantastic forecast. Nothing too extreme as far as heat and at least we have some more rain chances around here. So temperatures this morning will uh, continue to go up through the 70s once we drop down a little bit more and then 84 at noon and 87 high temperature today. The next few days are going to be pretty much cut and paste. Roughly the same temperatures going through uh, Saturday, tomorrow and Sunday. Then later on Sunday, we do have um, that chance for a couple of showers to move on in here and a few scattered about on Monday. So of the three day weekend, not including today, uh, the outdoor activities tomorrow as well as Sunday and then, you know, a little iffy on Monday there, but at least rain chances continue into Tuesday and Wednesday. Hey, not necessarily cancel plans, but just no. be prepared. Exactly. All right. Sounds good. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mike. Trying to listen to you guys and update our KSAT uh, Facebook page with this accident as well. 649, 71 degrees. Now let's look out there with live cam. Looking good out there in this camera shot, but again, be aware of that accident over coming into Seguin on I-10. Uh, actually coming into San Antonio oh, come, sorry, from Seguin. From Westbound Seguin. 10 at Zool Road, east of San Antonio. We'll be right back. Good morning, it's here. Coming up, the big Memorial Day weekend getaway is on. Now, what to expect if you're just about to hit the road or maybe flying out? What's the best and worst times to do all of that? Also this morning, the latest on the debt ceiling showdown with the default looming and what you can do to protect your money. Plus, we hear from the bank customer who stopped a robbery with, get this, a hug. Yeah, that's coming up right here on GMA. Memorial Day weekend is considered the unofficial start to summer, and with it comes the start of a busy travel season. More people are going to travel by air this year, uh, we project, than in 2019, which is really not notable because airfares are pretty high. Andrew Gross is a spokesperson for AAA. The agency says more than 42 million Americans are expected to travel 50 miles or more from home over the holiday weekend, a 7% increase from 2022. 3.4 million of them will be flying, which could make this weekend the busiest for airports since 2005. The increased pressure on airports is raising concerns about the understaffing of air traffic controllers. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says the FAA has increased hiring officers, but is still recovering from the pandemic. The optimal numbers that I'd like us to be at are about 3,000 north of where we are. United Airlines CEO Scott Kirby says the industry as a whole has done a good job to prepare for this summer. And at United, you know, we have 10 percent more employees per, per block hour than we had uh, pre-pandemic. we got 25% more spare aircraft. We've doubled our investment in spare parts around the system. While most travelers will be driving to their destinations, car travel is still expected to be down slightly from pre-pandemic levels, with gas prices higher than 2019 levels, but still lower now than this time last year. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. Coming up on GMS 8 9, you'll see an even beefier story about Camp Brisket. We'll have a debrief called Things I Wish Someone Had Told Me About Smoking Brisket. We'll pass along some expert advice for absolutely free. Keep it right here for GMSA at 9. All right, check out traffic. And one of the big problems out there is well east of town. Well, it's not showing up on the map. Yeah, anymore. it's there. It's right behind the 10 uh, oh, I'm emblem. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me try and mess with that map a little bit. It's right there where that, that 10 is on the uh, Almost I smack dab between Seguin and Loop 1604 coming westbound on I-10 itself. Into San Antonio. Yeah, and there you go. yeah, there you can see where traffic is starting to uh, back up. Uh, and that yes. problem is, Mike, is that we're seeing that almost all the westbound lanes are currently blocked uh, at the moment due to a minor accident. We see this with major accidents all the time, but m minor accident uh, has caused big problems coming into town.
All right, if you are hitting the roads, really no problem with the uh, the weather at all. I mean, take your sunglasses with you and don't forget the sunscreen, by the way. 71 right now, mid 60s in the hill country with a fair amount of humidity that will drop somewhat during the afternoon. 87 high temperature today and then we are going to be seeing uh, about the same situation tomorrow. Sunday, we do have a chance for a few showers and thunderstorms around here on Monday and only 84 degrees. So overall, I'm going to give it two thumbs up for for the Memorial Day weekend. Have a very pleasant Memorial Day, everybody. All right, thank you, Mike. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back at nine. Have a great day. Good Morning America is next.